Hey, what's up, guys? I figured I'd do a video on my planted tanks, my fish tanks, and just kind of show you what I got going and explain to you what I do with my fish tanks. Let's give you a quick look at what we got going on. Try to point out some of these plants. This is the Java fern. Okay, those are Java fern. In the back, those long ones back there, those are called the Rotellas. I may have mentioned that in some of my earlier videos. Those are called Rotellas. This right here is called Anubius. I'm not sure which Anubius. There's probably about 10 or 15 varieties of Anubius. But this is an Anubius. As you can see, there's two of them. You can see the rhizome for the one. And the one in the back over there, there's another rhizome. These are called Crips. Cryptolinies. I don't know which Cryptolini. It might be Cryptolini Wendelini or Wendeli. A Wendini or something. There's several varieties of these kind of crypts, but that's a Cryptolini. This is another, this one right here with the big leaf. That is another type of, it's either a crypt or it's a Nubius. It's something in them families. I think it's in a Cryptolini family, but I don't remember. But that's a different type of plant. There's another one right here. This one's really beautiful if I could get it going again. Let's see what else we got in here. There's more Cryptolinis. You see the bases on them look very healthy, very good. They're growing nice. Now, I just recently trimmed this whole tank down because it overgrows. And what happens is when it overgrows, it kills all the lower growth. And you don't want to kill your lower growth because that stuff in the back, that rotella, the rotella, there's, there's red rotella and there's green rotella. This is the red rotella. Uh, the, this red rotella will literally fill the entire tank solid. So you have to get in here when it starts to get in that real heavy grow, growing uh, pattern and you got to keep it cut on a regular basis. I just cut this stuff and look how tall it is already. It's coming up all over the place. So I, I'll discuss that in a minute but I just want to show you some of these plants first and try to ident identify what, what they are. This is another crypt in the back. It's a long leaf that's called balsami. What, what is that called? Something. I forgot the name of this long. It's just still a crypt but it's in that family. These are all crypts. Here's another Anubius right here. Uh, that might be Babari Anubius. That's a, a miniature or micro version of the other Anubius I showed you. That other Anubius tends to get very, very large. So that's another type of Anubius. These are all crypts. Most of these crypts that you see in here all started from about two dozen plants and now there's, you know, hundreds in here now. I mean, I can't physically count them all but believe me when I tell you there's literally hundreds and once I start feeding them again this time of year when I feed them they multiply even more so this tank I'll do an update once this tank starts to fill in and show you how much it really fills in once I begin to feed it but during the summer months I don't feed it because I'm busy with the garden and all that other stuff and everything tends to die back and it comes to a minimal stage like this and then once I feed it this tank is going to literally fill up with all these different varieties of crypt cryptolini. So what else we got here? That ball thing right there, that's called Schwagensborg. It's a type of Pelia, also known as round Pelia. It's a very interesting plant. I've been growing this now for about three or four years. This whole tank is about seven years old. So most of this, I've added some plants to it throughout the years, but most of what you see here was established about seven years ago when I started this tank. There were a lot more fish in here. They ended up dying off because of me and my neglect and stuff like that. But that's just the way I do it. All right. So let me just finish with the plant identification. If there's anything else, we have this dwarf sage right here. This dwarf sage was at one time prolific. It covered the whole area over here. It was beautiful looking at one time. And then the rotellas grow in like they normally do, and I didn't get to them in time because I was busy keep trying to keep up with the garden and everything else. And when the rotella grows in, it kills off all the lower growth. The problem with dwarf sedge is when it gets hit like that with the low light, it takes a lot for them to come back. So I almost lost my dwarf sedge, and they've, it took about a year, but they're starting to come back now. And if I keep trimming this back, if I keep get all the rest of this rotella that all this rotella grew up here. I didn't put any of this here. All the rotella was just in the back. And now it grew itself around to here. And it's starting to kill off my dwarf sag patch that's left. And that's got, we got, I got to make changes. I can't stay like that. The, the, the rotella's got to go. 
we got to get the dwarf sag back. What else we got? There's another giant Anubius in the back over here. This thing is absolutely humongous. It's got like several rhizomes that came off it, and it's like I don't know if you can see it. It's like you can. See, it looks like a banyan tree back there. <laughs> it's awesome. I love Anubius. They're easy to grow. The, this red thing is called nettles, 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 or something like that. I don't have the exact name. I'll provide the names if you guys are interested. I'll look them up. This is probably one of the few of the red variety of plants that you can grow without having to supply it with a steady supply of iron. If you do supply it with iron, it'll get really red. It's right now starting to get red because I, I gave it a dose, a good dose of iron and it's starting to really get red but like all of these tall growing plants they, the leaves will eventually start to crumble up like that I don't know why they do that but they do it's a very slow growing plant for a viney or tall kind of plant like this this is very fast uh, within a month this tank will be completely filled solid with this stuff so this stuff you gotta be on it constantly whereas this stuff can sit there for months and just look just like that it's an absolutely gorgeous plant if you trim it down to the bottom like that, you get this whole canopy, this whole top of these beautiful red tops come up. It just looks so gorgeous in your tank. It's a great accent color for your tank. It looks beautiful. Uh, I haven't really did anything with it. I am trimming it back. I'm trying to get cuttings from this to add to my other tank. There's more plants in here. I'm trying to see. Do you see this thing right back here, that weird looking thing? Let's see. We'll give you another view. I don't know if you can see that. See that big thing there? That's called Balbitus. That is another type of fern, like Java fern, but it's very expensive. That piece, that f giant thing you see there, at one when I bought it, was only a piece that was about three quarters of an inch long, with one little leaf that was coming out of it. Look at the size of this thing after about five, five years. I think I've had that plant. After about five years, this thing is gigantic in there. It's literally starting to. I thought it would grow taller, but it's growing like sideways, so it's bushing out. So I may have to trim that back, but it's an old plant. That's been around a long time. What else we got here that I can show you? I think that's most of them. There's some uh, other stuff like this stuff growing that's called um, Java moss. Not It's not the same as Java fern, but it's actually called java moss so they're not the same species or anything they just use the same name to describe but that's growing randomly throughout here i had a big mass of java moss i had to get rid of it because it just starts spreading all over your tank so i wiped out the tank with it completely and you can still see even after i wipe it out it still comes back in patches like a weed and but that's okay if it stays a little bit like that i don't mind it it looks really good on the top of a rock or on top if you can control it and just grow it's it grows really nice it looks really cool problem is is that it, it tends to not grow the way I want it to and it, then it spreads all over your tank like an algae it, it's got its downfalls I started this tank like eight years ago something like that and originally when I started the tank it was just gravel on the bottom and I would put plants in there and they never really would take they'd end up coming up and I don't know it wasn't really working that out that well so I eventually I read a book called the Wolfstead method and that book basically discusses how you can create a tank and a tank can become its own ecosystem and it goes into all this biology and the, the association between the water plants and and all this stuff you have to read the book if you're really interested I'm sure you can find it online but the Wallstead method is really what got me started with this connection between ponds and gardens and things like that that's kind of where I started getting that applying my concept because the Wallstead method is really an interesting study if you learn about it and how it works and once you understand that, you can begin to reach out and start to apply that to different aspects of your gardening, which is what I did. And I use a lot of those fundamentals in my garden, as you can see with the pond and everything. But her method really covers a lot about how a tank needs to evolve on its own and it's maintenance free. Now, what I will tell you about this is I'll explain to you what's going on here. Okay, so I have roughly about two inches of dirt 
all the way through the bottom. There is crushed oyster shell mixed in there. Not a lot, but some. There's rock dust in there. There's also, I believe, a little bit of magnesium sulfate mixed into the soil. And I also have a couple of those tablets you would get. They're like fertilizer tablets, slowly released fertilizer tablets that have all the nutrients and micro elements and all that stuff. I have the, a few of those in there, and I'm sure they're gone by now. But, And I also have molding clay, or what they call sculpting clay. So I have sculpting clay in chunks all the way throughout here. And they recommend putting sculptor's clay inside your soil because that has the right type of iron in it for the plants to need and all that kind of stuff. So all of that's been made and done. And the soil has been done. And this soil, this tank, like I told you, has been set up for about eight years, but it really was set up. It, it's really only been the way it is now for seven years. Because I realized after the first year and all the maintenance and the water conditions were com coming unstable constantly, fish were dying, and say something else needed to be done. I read the Wallstead method, and that following year, or shortly after I'd done that, I went over to this method, and this is the Wallstead method of my tank. So now, after this many years, this tank, I do not change water in this tank. Yes, I do add water. I do not do water changes. I think I just said that. I very seldomly clean the filters, though I clean the filters. I try to clean the filters once or twice a year, maybe three times a year. I have to clean the glass from time to time and the top glass to my lighting. I clean that from time to time because that gets algae. All the algae is like a algae collector on a glass rather than it building up generally anywhere else in a tank. It will form on the glass, which is perfectly fine and I'm happy with that. That's why you don't see any algae in this tank. I have never cleaned this tank, the glass really, in the last couple of years anyway. I mean, in the beginning, I started to in a Wallstead method. Finally, the equilib equilibrated. I finally didn't have to clean the glass anymore. And I can get in on and on about the ecology of things, how I keep snails in my tank. Uh, they help the balance of the tank and all this other stuff. And I haven't done anything to this tank other than feed these fish every day and I skip one day a week feeding them and I can eventually get into you know the sump that I have I'm not going to get into that in this video this video will be I, if I were to show you everything it'd be take me days to do this video so I'm just trying to cut this one short but I don't do anything to it no water changes the only thing I do is I add fertilizers to it I use dry fertilizers some people will prefer to use regular you know fertilizers I use both but I prefer to use dry ferts when I can in certain especially with the potassium sulfate because the wet fertilizers are way too expensive and I can get a much higher impact with the potassium than I can with the other ones so you get more bang for your buck with that so again I don't really don't do anything with it I do try to clean the filters once or twice a year I add water because I have to add water because it evaporates from the tank. I really don't keep the heat on very much. I generally try to keep the temperature somewhere around there in the middle of the green. Uh, sometimes it drops lower than that during the summer, but then again, I, it really doesn't change temperature too much. Light has pretty much been the same light bulbs for the last seven years. I haven't changed bulbs since then. As you can see, the plants are doing pretty good. I just started fertilizing, and I'll show you in about a month. I'll give you an update of their progress after I do once a week fertilizers. You'll see that the growth will boost quite significantly, and then it's just a matter of maintaining that growth level uh, without it overgrowing, because that means I gotta go in and start sticking my arms in there and cleaning it out and cutting things down. I don't really wanna do that either. I just wanted to bump a little bit. That's all I want. A little bit of bumping, get it nice and get all the new shoots to come up. You'll see all kinds of new cryptolinies pop up everywhere and, and I'm good. And it'll thicken up really nice like a front lawn. All right, so I'll do another video on my other tank that I just set up. If you got any questions, just leave your comments below. I'll try to answer them or maybe do a video response to your question if it's anything that would require that. But see that rock right there? That thing's really cool if I shut the lights off. That thing's really cool. It glows blue. It looks so cool in there. And there's my angels. These angels are about 
seven, eight, yeah, eight years old, actually. These are the original angels. I've had other fish in there. I had everything from discus to crayfish to everything in here. And it's just too much. It lives and it dies. It has a cycle. The tank, once the tank finds its cycle, you don't want to add any more fish or take away. It's where it needs to be. And this tank is where it is. My fish don't get sick. They're nice and healthy. They don't get too big. You see these fish? These fish have been this size basically since I had them. Why? Because I don't want them to get big. Okay? She's, this one here might be a little big. She's a little shy. But they, they don't get any bigger than this because I don't overfeed them. I don't want them to get huge. If I want them to get huge, I can feed them tons of food and get these fish huge if I want. The bigger they are, the more they're going to offset the balance of the tank. I like to keep them this size. I keep them that size by the way I feed them. And these two are a mated pair, by the way. They have spawned several times. And in order for me to generally get them to spawn, i got to shut the heat off, do a water change, change the pH of the water rapidly, and then they'll go into a spawning stage. But there's a risk associated with that, with upset, upsetting the balance of my tank. So I don't generally do that. I can catch them out of there, spawn them in another tank, it's probably better off rather than me upsetting this nature of this tank. That's it. I'll do a video on my other tank and show you what I got going on there. All right. So I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.